What is up? This is Fling with the FS Army, and we're looking back at the Millie Maker NFL Week 2. Let's go ahead and let's jump into some wins. So right off the bat, uh, we had our boy had some great ROI here. And, you know, it's not really surprising when you trust the Domination Station. He wanted to cut the Domination Station. No, it worked out in favor. We got a Showdown Bank. Mini Max, $75 in, 1100 out. Total touchdown thing, afternoon slate only. I love it. Uh, guessing the total number of touchdowns within three players. And then I know this is baseball, but this is a week in review. So we got a 20K MLB winner buying a jersey, doing it right. By the way, if you guys want to get access to DFS Army for a week, the optimizer, the coaches notes, the cheat sheet, all the things, only $10 for your first week. Use code CRUNCH. Some of the people who've actually tried it, like Jay Grace there, was wanting to extend further. You definitely can. Now's the time. Just give it a try. I promise you'll probably want to stay. So let's go ahead and jump into the Millie Maker winner. This week. And this lineup, it's kind of funny because I was listening to the game plan with geek and, and john stat sational and they geek kind of was just saying listen every time this is kind of how dfs goes right every time someone has a bad week everyone's off of them and that's really when you should go back to them and specifically in this matchup going against a washington team there's been quite poor in the secondary just on defense in general going to daniel jones here in this spot was in a lot of ways the right play. You know, he wrote him up on his cheat sheet, silly for the Millie. You'll see when we go through the top 10 lineups here, there were several lineups that had Daniel Jones in them. And the thought process here is it's not necessarily that Daniel Jones is going to be the high scoring quarterback on the slate because we know that probably wasn't going to be the case. But it's a lower scoring week for quarterbacks. And Daniel Jones, being only 5,300, has a pretty good week. Like there are paths to him getting in the winning millimaker lineup. He's done it multiple times. Um, almost every year that he's been in the league, he's been in the millimaker winning lineup a couple times. Now, this time it was Malik Neighbors who carried him there with 31 points. So uh, you know, this was a nice little cheap stack. It's like a I think a total salary was 11 2 between these two guys, contrarian, uh, because Daniel Jones was seven percent owned, and uh, you know, it was a a Daniel to Malik neighbors. Now geek also wrote up Wandell. He didn't get there, but Wandell had a good game as well. So pretty good. And just the overall theme here is roster construction. And this is one of the things that Burns talks about is a lot of these five to six K uh, quarterbacks we've seen by back testing, you know, the past seasons, it, they have a much easier path to getting into the Millie maker winning lineup um, than, you know, seven K quarterback and specifically the way the defenses are playing right now they're kind of taking away the big play and they're saying you beat us underneath so these guys got to dink and dunk their way there so you see rushing quarterbacks they obviously have that kind of floor where they could just take off and run and you know they have a good enough floor that at low salary they can get there um or you know just the the josh allen's uh you know the lamar jackson's the patrick mahomes they often fail at their salary so this is something you want to look to target in the millie maker we're going to continue to see this as we look through the top 10 lineups quarterbacks that are like 6k and under they hit at a high rate now what was different about this lineup was alvin Kamara um, was obviously very contrary and the reason for this was they were projected to lose uh, this game, they were actually pretty big underdogs. And typically you don't want to play running backs in a negative game script. So he was lower owned this week than he should be, but it's pretty obvious with the Clint Kubiak system that uh, Kamara is a guy that we're probably going to want to make sure we have exposure to every week, regardless of the matchup. Jordan Mason, this was a lot of the content at DFS Army this week centered around Jordan Mason because he was really kind of a free square. Um, the news came out that Christian McCaffrey wasn't going to play the Monday night game. DraftKings had already set their salary. And you get Jordan Mason basically in a starter role, priced as a backup here. So you really got value. And this is just kind of a spot where 
okay, we know he's going to be chalk, but we really trust the Shanahan system. This goes back all the way to the Mike Shanahan days. And we know he's likely to produce. And at 5,200, if he scores 20 points, that's easy that he's going to hit 4X. And by the way, DFS Army had projections had him at 19 points, so nailed it. Um, and it, it was going to be really hard for him not to be in the winning lineup if he hit 20 points, if he hit 4X. Even 15, he could have got there at 5,200. So great play there. Um, now, Marvin Harrison, I loved this play. I personally will get into the afternoon slate in a little bit. Uh, I played a good amount of Marvin Harrison in the afternoon slate, almost had a takedown and some single entry. Honestly, might have if this game didn't get out of hand so early. You could see 41 to 10. Uh, Los Angeles just couldn't keep pace, and they really just didn't need Marvin Harrison to do much. They basically like shut him down after at like halftime. So uh, he absolutely smashed the first quarter of this game um, and kind of coasted the rest of the way. Chris Godwin is a chalk play. You know, one of the things I want to point out here too is secondary stacks. This is something I talk about when we looked at the Millie maker winners in 2023, secondary stacks get into the winning lineup about 77% of the time. So it's something to be conscious of specifically. If you're hand building, try to put a secondary stack in, we got Marvin Harrison and Trey McBride right here. That secondary stack, uh, they smashed. Now also one thing I want to talk about is, Roster construction and just eating, billing, willingly eating chalk, but getting different elsewhere, right? So it's okay to play a chalk player like Jordan Mason, to play chalk Chris Godwin. Um, you know, J.K. Dobbins, I didn't really think anyone thought he was going to be this highly owned, but it's okay to eat this chalk knowing that you're going to get different in other spots. You got 6% Trey McBride. You got 3% Marvin Harrison. These were the top leverage plays. And obviously Alvin Kamara, the top leverage play on these slates. So we want to be able to eat chalk and look to get different elsewhere. So in the Millie Maker, Larksville GPB like this, you're looking to pivot in three, four spots. And you see that here, low owned, low owned, low owned, low owned. Um, and, and even right here, but you know, also eating some chalk and getting good plays. And um, yeah, so this was mainly Daniel Jones, some neighbors, and then we had um, Marvin Harrison, Trey McBride, and Arizona defense. So there was uh, that secondary stack with the defense. Kind of a little onslaught action there. Cooper Cup got hurt. I'm not sure if that would have been the case, you know, uh, had he not gotten hurt. But uh, nonetheless, it worked out for Sam Pitt, 16, eight lineups. And that's another thing. You don't need to play. You don't need a mass multi-enter to win the Millie Maker. You just got to kill it with your builds. Specifically, if you're doing less entries, go all in. We're actually going to look at this next guy, number two. We're going to look at his MME strategy because C. Sears, I believe he won the Millie Maker last year. Um, if he didn't, this is a guy that continually places top 10 in the Millie Maker. And you're about to see why, because he goes all in when he plays. So he's going to have big swings, but I feel like if you're playing uh, 150, I feel like that's a very uh, sharp way to play it. If you're good at, you know, predicting game outcomes, if you're good at predicting how you think the slates want to go, going to go, you got to really go all in uh, in a couple spots. And the funny thing is we're going to get into his exposures. He basically locked Gardner Minshew in and he didn't even have a great day, but it kind of goes to, to what we were talking about. It was overall a lower scoring week for quarterbacks. Kyler Murray was the top quarterback. He scored 28 points. So typically, you know, you'll see at least one guy in the 30s, sometimes multiple. Not this week. And 98% Gardner Minshew, 13 points. But Adams smashed, Bowers smashed. So, uh, and it ended up working out for him. He got 200,000 second place. This lineup was a uh, pretty heavy stack. We got Minshew plus Adams and Bowers, so plus two, and his Zay Flowers bring back in this spot. So uh, also had J.K. Dobbins and L.A. Chargers defense, so uh, running back and defense stack right there. Uh, Alvin Kamara uh, as a one-off. Got Jordan Mason, so really crushed it with the running backs, three running back build. And obviously Jordan Mason, again, is going to be a constant Malik neighbors. So also, uh, had that one off. So really good stuff from that top build. 
and yeah, you'll see it's, it's pretty much, we'll get into the exposures real quick, but it's all Minshew. So 98% Minshew. And listen, when you play this way, you got to know that you're going to lose like way more than you're going to win. Um, like it takes balls to play 98% Gardner Minshew. I mean, wow. Uh, but Hey, take hard stands. That's how you win large field GPPs take hard stands. Now, I wouldn't suggest pretty much locking in Gardner Minshew, but you know, maybe you, you did a hundred percent Jordan Mason, or maybe you said, you know what? I'm not playing Cooper cup. I'm going to X him out. So that's kind of the hard stand that, that you have to take to win these, um, at running back. It was a lot of Jordan Mason. So 60%, but you know, only 10% over the field. Um, we got, a lot of these plays that, that we liked, you know, Isaiah Pacheco favored running back Najee Harris going against, uh, you know, a pretty bad Denver run D um, Kyron Williams was chalk. He was in a good spot this week. They were favored on the road. Um, they got some offensive line issues and they got a lot of entry issues. We're going to have to really rethink Kyron Williams going forward. I'll say that because um, there's probably going to be a lot of negative game scripts. Um, but Josh Jacobs, this was a good play with Malik Willis. He, he was obviously going to get a ton of carries and, you know, nothing too crazy here stands out except uh, a little bit of Henry. So even with the field on Henry, a little under on James Connor, um, under on Dobbins. One thing that really stood out to me, 2% Alvin Kamara. So, I mean, really low exposure, but all it takes is that one lineup. So the Minshew, the Adams, the Bowers, boom, everything stars kind of aligned, got Alvin Kamara, um, got Dobbins in that lineup as well. So pretty crazy. Uh, and then obviously this is not surprising. If you have that much Gardner Minshew, you're going to have a lot of Devonte Adams as well. So um, and the same thing with Brock Bauer. So basically lock those guys in with uh, Minshew. So you can see his thought process. If Minshew gets there, it's Minshew plus two. That's what he had. He had a lot of Zay Flowers bringbacks. I'm not sure if he used the same boost rule like we do at DFS Army, but uh, definitely got a lot of Zay Flowers or maybe just pumped up his projection to get a lot of him um, and you know, kind of went how he wanted it to. Had a good amount of Brian Thomas. I liked that. Um, you know, not that much Brian Thomas, but I certainly liked him with Evan Ingram out, giving him a boost. Malik Neighbors, listen, we knew Malik Neighbors was going to be a beast. Like, if you if you play Dynasty, if you follow the NFL draft, the scouting community, this dude is legit. So even with Danny Dimes, he's still going to produce. Uh, like the Rishi Rice play, and you know, a little bit over on Jamar Chase, not too much, solid play. One thing though, faded cup. So not only did he take a hard stand on Minshew and the Raiders offense and that overall game stack, but said, I'm out on cup. So I'm going to play the expensive Devontae Adams around that same price range. So it was almost a one to one pivot, a little bit less, of course, and obviously got a lot of flowers as well. So um yeah, that's pretty much it. One thing I, you know, I noticed did play a lot of running back. So a lot of these guys, if you're playing 150, um, you know, it's important to be over on the guys that you really want. But if you're playing 150, don't keep your pool too small. Like if you're playing 20 lineups, yeah, tighten the pool up. But if you're playing 150, get exposure to a lot of different running backs, even if it's just, you know, a little bit of exposure, because if you just played favor with running backs, for example, and you X out Alvin Kamara, well, you had no chance on this slate. So if you're playing 150, get these guys that they can break the slate, who've been known to break the slate, like an Alvin Kamara, 2% of Alvin Kamara, won him $200,000. So really good stuff from him. Um, and you know, the leaderboards, what I loved about this week is we had a lot of uh, top DFS pros. So I love looking at the... MME strategy of top DFS pros. What are they doing? What was their thought process? Okay. The field was doing this. What pivots did they make off of that? Like, did they eat that Mason chalk? Did they eat the cup chalk? Like, you know, what did they do? So 
shady advice. He's definitely um, a top DFS pro. And his top lineup, he had um, Purdy. He had a Purdy lineup. And uh, Jordan Mason, Debo Samuel. So he wasn't afraid to stack Mason with Purdy. And it makes sense because he's cheap enough and he does get some passes. So he had Purdy, Mason, Debo, and Kittle. So this was San Fran plus three. And honestly, like pretty crazy that this lineup placed 16th in the middle eight because uh, San Fran did not have a good day. Not by any means. And that just kind of goes back to what we were saying about uh, Daniel Jones only scoring 18 points, but ended up in the winning build. Right. So, but Mason did well, Debo did well, Kittle did well. So crazy. Um, you know, they didn't get the points, but the production was still there. Still got a lot of yards. They still move the ball up and down the field. Pretty kind of just crushed this team from probably winning the whole thing because he just threw multiple interceptions, but the same thing they got, Camara in this build, um, you know, three running back build, which we kind of knew it was going to be a three running back build this week with all the value Camara, Mason and, uh, Brees Hall, of course. Um, yeah, that's his top build. 125% 209. Yeah. Some Darnold in there. Crazy. The Darnold to Jefferson lineup didn't do it. uh, Surprising. It didn't do as good as, uh, the Purdy lineup. So let's look at his exposures a little bit. Won't spend too much time on this, but just kind of want to see where his thought process was. Now, you know, Carr was the guy to have only had 2% of Carr, but still had a profitable uh, day plus 5K, almost 6K in the Millie Maker. You will definitely take that. Um, yeah, nothing really crazy. So the complete opposite of C-Series, right? Um, there's lots of different ways to skin a cat. And, you know, this is kind of what we talk about. Sometimes I think it's just, it's smart to, to have flat exposures on a lot of guys, but like really just go all in on like one or two spots. So, you know, playing a lot of different quarterbacks, but 10% of 150, that's still 15 lineups. So like, if you're, if your roster construction, of those 15 lineups is good. You could still get there. So I like it. Now, low on car and, you know, pretty flat across the board at running back, though. That's where, you know, almost locked in Jordan Mason and 72% uh, was very over the field on Brees Hall, who had a good day. Um, You know, if Braylon Allen doesn't get his two tutties, he has a much better day. I had a much better day because I had a lot of Brees Hall. Um, but yeah, you, you like the Jordan Mason, um, Charbonnet. I loved him in this spot with Kenneth Walker out. And then, you know, one thing I noticed too, had some Derrick Henry and had Elvin Kamara. Now, when a guy is 4% owned, like you don't have to go like, you know, necessarily like 40%, 50% that player, like if they're 4%, he was almost triple the field here with 11% um, and still like relatively low exposure. So, uh, and, you know, I really think that's that's one of the things uh, that we can take away from a lot of these bills and we look at them is what is their, what is the field doing? What is the field weight? We don't, we need to be over that. If we want positive leverage, we like that player, but we don't need to like be way over that to the point where like if Alvin Kamara has like a, a bad day, It doesn't, you know, crush all of your lineups. And then wide receiver, you know, he was under on cup 36%. And honestly, he was not higher than 40% on any of the wide receivers. So played a lot of wide receivers. I think he played about four year, 40 wide receivers. So quite a bit, um, highest exposures being Debo, Yoshi Voss, Johnson, CD lamb. Um, CD Lamb had a pretty good day. Um, honestly would have had a better day if Dak didn't miss him for a touchdown. Dak was just bad yesterday. And that's one of the things with wide receivers, they play a dependent position. So, so many times they could be in a great spot. They can have a high team total. And most times they would smash in that spot. But if the quarterback has a bad day, that's how it goes. That's DFS. 
yeah, that's pretty much it there. Um, Parkinson, notice he was pretty pretty heavy on the value tight ends. I liked that as well. I like a pay down um, for sure. Jaseki, Aikens, and Colby Parkinson. One thing that was surprising to me and I think probably uh, hurt him a lot was going uh, just stone minimum at Carolina defense. And, um, you know, the Chargers, they won that game pretty handedly. So, you know, wasn't wasn't the best defense of play. So, yeah, that's uh, that's going to do it for shady advice. Want to look at one more pro here real quick. See what his lineup was. And really, I think the reason why I want to look at the Colts is because uh, we're actually going to look at the afternoon slate here in a quick second uh, of what he did. You know, just a really good day for the Colts all around. Um, and what I liked about it was he played Murray. So I played Murray on the afternoon slate and did quite well. Um, but I, I wish I had played more of him on the main slate because I really think Murray was the play. Like if you played a combination of Murray, uh, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr., McBride, and Connor, even like you did really well overall on the slate. This lineup here. His top lineup, 202, contrarian on a chalk slate. He had Murray. He had Mar Marvin Harrison Jr. So it was just QB plus one, but you kind of wanted, you didn't need Connor, um, not on the main slate anyway, but uh, you also wanted McBride if you could get him. And, uh, but yeah, this is a good lineup. And honestly, just Demarcus Robinson is what kind of crushed this lineup. But overall, you know, we had Brees Hall, we had Kamara. And we had Jordan Mason. Debo did pretty good. Marvin Harrison. Um, but yeah, only seven points from Demarcus Robinson. So you need a little bit higher tournament winning value than that. Now, what you'll notice here, Mahomes was as high as exposure, 19%. So again, not going crazy. You know, playing a lot of different quarterbacks, but it's also 100 max. Mahomes, Lawrence, uh, but only 8% Murray, but double the field. So there we go again, kind of like with Kamara, 11%. Um, he was double the field there. So ended up making the day. At running back, Brees Hall. So was very much over on Brees Hall. Charbonnet, really good play too. Um, Kyron, you know, as we talked about, negative game script. And Jordan Mason was actually a little under on Jordan Mason, but you know, it's kind of hard to say what you think it's going to happen in the Millie. It's, it's a wild card. I did not expect JK Dobbins to be 20, 27% owned. So, um, you just never know sometimes what it's going to be, but yeah, I mean, he probably thought he was going to be even with the field in, uh, the Millie with Mason and then a wide receiver. We got lamb. So double the field on lamb. Kirk in that elevated role with Ingram out didn't get there. Just that offense is wildly inconsistent. Debo Samuel, um, Rasheed Rice. So, you know, overall pretty good there. Yoshi, Tyler Johnson, triple the field on Jefferson. And then the cup fade. So, uh, 23%. So, you know, it was about half what the field was on, on Cooper cup. And, uh, you know, there we go. Taking those hard stands, taking those hard stands was under on Mason, just a little under, uh, way over on Brees and, uh, faded cup tight end, nothing crazy here. Uh, if you basically, it kind of looks like you just sent a 20% exposure max, at tight end, which is something I certainly like to do because it's a spot of a high variance and a defense. Same thing. No defense under, uh, over 11% defense. You never know what you're going to get, but, uh, yeah, crazy, uh, pretty good stuff from the Colts. And, you know, it's nice to look at the MME strategy of DFS pros and actually see some guys, uh, have a positive ROI day because, just keep that in mind when you look at it more times than not, this is a losing contest to play in. So one thing I want to look at real quick is the three game slate. And I love these. And honestly, I've been thinking about shifting a lot more of my, uh, 
you know, portfolio like that I play on a Sunday over to the afternoon or the early uh, slates because I, I like them. There's less to focus on smaller pool, just really playing one game, playing one stack and hoping to be right. And if you are, you have a good day. Honestly, I, uh, had great ROI on this slate and I only played like five lineups and they were like all Kyler Murray lineups. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Had I played, had I did 20 max Kyler Murray, I might've taken down the tournament. I placed like, um, 65th in this one that was, uh, the single entry it was like 16 K. So, and, uh, you know, we're going to look at the top lineup here. And of course that's what fantasy labs always does is going to crash on us. But, uh, yeah, we're going to look at the top lineups and you're going to kind of see a good amount of Kyla Murray. And by the way, actually, before I do this, I, there's something actually that I missed on the, uh, the Millie maker that, that I wanted to go over. And th I think this is very important. If you are like studying, if you're looking at past lineups and you're, you're kind of studying your process and you're like, you know, where did I go wrong? Even someone who placed even 150 max or in the Millie maker who placed third. When I looked at this guy's lineups, I'm sure he was just killing he or she or just killing his or herself over what they did. So played Kyla Murray and you'll notice this is a Kyla Murray plus Trey McBride. So it's a single stack, which is fine. Um, you know, maybe he or she just wanted to play Kyler Murray single sacks because he runs around a lot. Um, and overall is a great lineup third in the Millie. Great. But when you look at exposures and you look at seeing Kyler Murray 20%, so that's the highest exposure quarterback. I wasn't like just played, you know, 5% Kyler Murray, like a lot of exposure to Kyler Murray. Then you go to wide receivers and you start going through these exposures and you're expecting to see, a lot of Marvin Harrison Jr. You see 1% Johnson and you see 2% Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you go to tight end and you see Trey McBride. So it was basically all Kyler Murray to Trey McBride. And my thing is, and this is something we have at DFS Army, where you can log into the domination station, you can run it and you can go stack combinations. So you can see, oh, I have Kyler Murray with you know, 10% Marvin Harrison Jr., 10% Trey McBride, so on, you know, 10% Dorch, so on and so forth. That is like something you want to check in your game because the last thing you want is you were on the right quarterback. You were so, you played 150, you had 20% Kyler Murray, and you lost because you didn't mix in any exposure hardly at all to Marvin Harrison Jr. Like if he has 10% exposure to Marvin Harrison Jr., he probably wins the Millie. So that's something I just wanted to go over because I've done that before. And, you know, going through like studying these past lineups, I've realized over time that that was a leak in my game. So um, don't don't be that way. Like, don't do that. You don't want to be sitting there like, oh, my God, I would have won the Millie Maker if I just forced some exposure to Marvin Harrison Jr. Just keep that in mind. Um, so, yeah, this top lineup. In fact, this is a luxury box. So we don't want to look at that one. We want to look at the. Um, this was a hundred K to first. This is the only thing about doing uh fantasy labs on uh, a live stream is, um, uh, it always does this actually when you're like trying to, to show the slate and I already went through here earlier. So like, I know it was fine, but now it's a problem. So afternoon. Only okay, we got it this time. Awesome. So Kyla Murray plus Trey McBride plus James Conner plus Arizona defense. So this is a three game slate. We have a two game slate coming up on Monday. So I wanted to take a look at this because there's a couple things off the bat like you want to think about. Number one, don't your normal like settings for a regular slate, you want to kind of throw them out. QB plus a running back is fine. Um, players against the defense is fine. We got Kyler William, Kyron Williams going against the defense. Double tight end is fine. 
Um, I'm not sure that we'll see it here, but it wins a lot, actually. Uh, Travis Kelsey and Andre, no, that's not it. But um, yeah, you will see it like it, it does win a lot. So just keep that in mind. That's something uh, you kind of want to retrain your brain specifically for these smaller slates to allow a lot more tight ends because there's very few ways to differentiate yourself um, on a three game slate. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, this is a beautiful lineup. Kyler Murray. Um, and I think probably had a lot of Kyler Murray. Yeah. 21%. So, uh, you know, played 14 lineups, had quite a bit of Kyler Murray and, um, I'm guessing probably did not fade Marvin Harrison Jr. So yeah, was filled weight on Marvin Harrison Jr. Um, but yeah, that's the lineup that took this one down, 171 points. The other one, if you like to go smaller stakes, um, we had a play action. 39,000 entries, $3 entry, 20 max. I love these. You know, I'm trying to get to the end here. Hopefully we'll get through this. There we go. Kyla Murray, same thing. So Murray, Marvin Harrison Jr., James Conner, QB plus two, one of them being the running back. Um, we got Yoshi Ross and Jaseki, Rishi Rice and Pacheco. So that game was heavily stacked. And then we had Murray plus two with a Kyron Williams bring back. So yeah, 169, two points away. Um, you know, you still want to look to be contrarian in some way, kind of have to retrain your brain to like chalk 14%. That's actually contrarian in a, a three, you know, three game slate, uh, 13%, you know, just that key, really low on guy there. So yeah, overall, um, really good stuff. Great lineup, contrarian stack for a three gamer. So keep that in mind when we look ahead to the, uh, Monday slate, but, uh, that's going to wrap it up for week two. Like I said, guys, we have essentially this $10 promotion going on right now. Your optimizer crapped out on you. The company's down, whatever. Um, you want to try ours out? Not only do you get an optimizer for $10, but you get the cheat sheets. You get all the tools, the matchup sheets, uh, target shares, things like that. Running our uh, wide receiver versus cornerback. Yeah. Uh, you obviously get the optimizer. You get the discord community. So you get all that for $10 for your first week. If you don't like it, awesome. You can cancel. If you're like a lot of people, $10, uh, you, you get in there, you try it out. You see the community, you see the DFS army wins and you think, you know what? I think, uh, this is a place I want to stay. Well, then you can upgrade to a month. So I will put this in the video description. Just remember at checkout, use promo code crunch. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. Best of luck.